Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. As you would have guessed from the title, I'm gonna make some changes today. I'm gonna change my social media strategy and also just make a few tweaks to my approach to social media and also content creation today. So I do this every year. I just like to have a bit of a refresh. So I'm gonna take you through it and I'm gonna explain to you the changes that I'm making and why. First though, I am gonna top up my makeup and whilst I do that, does it need topping up? Can you tell me? <laughs> I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna top up my makeup and we can talk about how my channels performed last year. So, quick recap, in case you've forgotten. I have a bunch of social media channels and I actually launched a few last year as well, just to make things even harder for myself. So I have two Instagram channels, I have a TikTok, and now I have two YouTube channels as well. Last year, even though I did add a YouTube channel for my podcast and an Instagram channel, for that same brand, The Creator Project. I do think it was a good year for my social channels anyway, which I'm quite surprised by, because I felt like I was doing a lot. But last year was also the year when I hired a full-time employee called Hayley. So that definitely helped as well. But overall, all my combined audience growth across all of my channels was just over 80,000, which is insane. If you're one of those people, hi, welcome. So happy to have you here. But to have 80,000 new people in like my orbit, is that the right word? In my facility. Huh? For, for, I don't even know what I'm saying. To have that many people join me is like insane. So that that's amazing. My main objectives for last year were engagement, especially on platforms like Instagram. So because of that, I actually changed my posting frequency. I'm not doing my makeup, am I? I actually changed my posting frequency on Instagram and I reduced it because contrary to what Instagram will tell you, you don't actually have to post every single day, especially if you're not necessarily trying to grow. And because my focus was on engagement, I was like, okay, well, I don't have to post as much anymore. Instead, I just need to focus on like engagement driving activities, like my stories and DMs and stuff like that. So I posted less. I posted, well, I was supposed to post three times a week, but as we all know, what often happens when you set a goal for your posting is you don't hit that goal and you end up posting a little bit less. Now, the issue with that for me is to drop down to three posts per week and then sometimes not do three posts per week meant that a lot of weeks I was only posting once or twice and that isn't enough. Like, I'm not trying to grow and I'm still not trying to go on Instagram, but to post once or twice a week, even if I'm just focusing on engagement, is still not enough. So that was a bit of an issue. In addition to that, a lot of the other things that I should have been doing for engagement was like regular story uploads and I wasn't doing that enough either. My DMs were managed pretty well though, but outside of that, I don't really feel like I was driving the engagement piece. I wasn't able to respond to as many comments as I wanted. So yeah, I don't, I don't feel massively happy with kind of how that channel performed in terms of engagement. It did still grow though, which is funny because it wasn't actually the objective, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> My YouTube channel on the other hand, performed really, really well. I felt like this was the first year where I actually started to notice like the seasonal trends of my channel. I'd noticed them before, because I've been on YouTube for about three years now. I had noticed them before, but it's hard to tell if your channel performs better in certain months of the year when you only have like two years worth of data to look at. Like you need a good few years to actually know for sure. And now that I have that, I can clearly see the kind of seasons for my channel. Like I'm currently in a really good season for my channel, start of the year, basically the first quarter of the year and the last quarter of the year is when my channel tends to thrive. I think it's just because people are like not out as much because it's cold and people are kind of focused on learning and development. So people just start to watch my videos a bit more, which is fine. I like knowing stuff like that. I'm not gonna rely on it. I'm not gonna let myself think that I don't have to try hard in the summer or spring months just simply because people only watch me during like the winter months. I'm not gonna do that, but it does help to have that context, especially when I go through my dips in the middle of the year, because last year I had another dip and there were times where I was like, oh, is this it for me? Like, have I reached that area of like irrelevancy? My content doesn't matter anymore. Like it's not hitting anymore. You know, we all have those kind of mindset troubles sometimes. Luckily, I didn't let any of those thoughts really like stick or settle in because then my channel went back to normal in the last quarter anyway. But overall, my YouTube channel performed really well. I massively improved my production quality as well, which was definitely something I wanted to do last year. So my videos used to look like this and they used to sound like this spend like an hour a day engaging with other accounts. And now a majority of them look like this and they sound like this. I don't need search as much as I used to. It's still a great way for me to reach. An Obviously right now I'm doing more of a vlog star video, so it doesn't necessarily look, look how it did towards the end of the year, but it massively improved and you guys noticed it as well, which is great. TikTok on the other hand, I mean, I don't think it was on my list of things to focus on last year. I really hope it wasn't because if it was, that's so embarrassing because let me tell you guys, I have done nothing. <laughs> 
I have just not been posting on TikTok much at all. At least I wasn't in 2023. TikTok was just like my neglected middle child last year. It's always third in my order of like things I'm trying to focus on. So I always tell creators to rank their social media channels. It's my, I feel like my camera is just slowly moving. It is, right? <laughs> my camera's like, bitch, I don't wanna look at your face. Hold on, <laughs> what is going on? A few moments later. Okay, I think I fixed it. It's my tripod, but I'm making some changes to my equipment this year, which I'll tell you about later. Where was I? Point is, I've not put much energy into TikTok. I have a weird relationship with TikTok as a platform in general, but I am trying to change that this year. And I've already started to post a lot more frequently on TikTok. But before I tell you about my TikTok strategy, let's make a coffee. I just bought a brand new coffee machine. Don't know if you saw it on my Instagram stories. I do not know how to use it. Several people have already told me that I'm using it incorrectly but whatever am I gonna learn am I gonna change no if it makes coffee then I'm using it correctly okay <laughs> here she is isn't she pretty she's a sage one but I think in America the brand is like Breville or Breville or something but guys this is not for the week like I literally feel like I now need to retrain as like a barista is it called a barista you know someone who makes coffee like I feel like that's what I now need to do I've got all the setup my syrups I've got my coffee tins but absolutely zero idea what I'm doing. So let's just give this a go. <laughs> How intense does that sound? <laughs> I'm gonna get my milk. The aim is vanilla latte, like that's what I'm trying to make. Are you supposed to just throw that away? Like that's from the last time I made a coffee and there's some left. Do I throw it away? Can you let me know? <laughs> I mean, I'm going to right now because I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> I've just made such a mess. <laughs> Any coffee connoisseurs tell me if that was a good espresso shot because I have no idea. Okay guys, that's my latte art for the day. Someone told me it was abstract and I was like, yeah, for sure. I feel like I see like a person in that. I think I'm so good at latte art that like the average human eye just doesn't even get it. Do you know what I mean? Talent. Look, I am well aware that I'm not using that machine properly, but the coffee is still hitting. So really who cares, you know? <laughs> All right, so we've reflected on how my social media channels performed this past year. Let's talk about the first change that I'm making, which is, you guessed it, TikTok. I'm coming back to TikTok. I already have returned to TikTok. Now, the reason why I want to tackle TikTok again is because I know that there's an opportunity there for me and I know that I'm sleeping on it and it's starting to bother me a bit. And to be fair, I think I've always kind of felt this way with TikTok. Like even when I was on TikTok and I was growing, I was like, oh, I still feel like I could be doing more. I hate that feeling. And that is a feeling that I feel like a lot of people, especially creators have quite often. But regardless, I am in a situation now because of the way my team is structured where I do have the capacity to create more TikToks. In addition to that, my relationship and my feelings towards the platform have changed slightly. I mentioned before they were a little bit complicated. I used to delete the app quite often because I found myself just losing time to just being sucked into like a scrolling hole on that platform. I've gotten a lot better with that now, which has really helped as well. Also, I, as much as I like making long form videos, short form videos aren't my favorite things to make. I, I like them, I don't mind them, but they're not my favorite things. But recently there has been a lot of photos being shared on TikTok, specifically in the form of like informative carousels. So in case you've not seen them, people use the carousel feature on TikTok to tell a story or to vlog their day, but through photos. So because of that, I feel a lot more inclined and a lot more excited to create content on the platform because now I have the ability to share multiple formats. It doesn't always just have to be videos. So on that note, let's film a couple of TikToks. I've already filmed two today. I'm about to film one more and then I'm heading out. I'm going to central London and I'm gonna do the carousel editing on the train. See, even just then I just opened TikTok to film and I had to like consciously stop myself from scrolling. People are so good on that app. Like you, people grab my attention within seconds to the point where I can't control myself and I can't drag it away, but I did it. Also, I don't always use a tripod to film TikToks. You don't need a tripod to film TikToks. It's just easier because of like where I am in my current setup. 
This is how much YouTube paid me in 2023. Also, I just realized I haven't put that photo back up. I was gonna do it before I filmed, but now I've started, there's no point now, right? I'll put it back up at some point. If you've been following me for a while, you know this is a regular occurrence. Like, they just never stay on for very long. <laughs> Hello, welcome to my wardrobe slash bedroom slash office space. One day I'll have an entire room like this just for my clothes, but today is not that day. So I'm gonna get ready, we're gonna head out. And this actually brings me on to the second change that I'm making, which is I wanna share more like behind the scenes content. So whether that just be my like standard vlogs, I've got a few trips coming up for work that I definitely wanna vlog, but also my educational content. Like I wanna switch up the format a bit so that I'm teaching by doing. Kind of like today's video. So let me know if you want more content like this in the description below. One of the main issues I have with it though, and one of the main issues why I haven't done it so far is because I hate vlogging, <laughs> which probably sounds like that would be counterintuitive, right? I want to like it and I know that I can learn to love it because I like the output, you know, but it's just vlogging in public I struggle with, which is why I find it so much easier when I'm abroad, which is actually quite telling because it obviously means that the issue I actually have is that maybe I just don't want to bump into people whilst I'm vlogging. And maybe that's why when I'm abroad, it doesn't bother me as much. So that's, that's quite in bit of an insight into how my brain works. But yeah, I just struggle with it sometimes, you know? So I know I've already done my hair, but I am gonna put a hat on because it is cold out there. Does anyone else just have like a pre-packed bag that they just throw in any bag that they've got? If you don't, it's a life hack. Everything that you normally need in your bag, just put it in this. So then when you switch bags, you just move this one like mini bag. Also the state of my hallway, can you see? This is all my boxes. And my washing is now in my hallway because my coffee machine has made all my clothes smell. There's just no space here, there's no space. <laughs> Taking my lip selfie. Okay, I am rushing right now because I couldn't find my phone just before I left. It turns out I left it in the bloody underwear drawer. Had to use my find my iPhone and everything just to find it. So now I'm rushing and you know when like you dress for the cold, but then you have to walk fast and you get really hot and your body doesn't know how to cool down. That's that's the current situation I'm in, but go try and make my train. I think I'll be alright. I need blue my top off. Now six by off snow. I didn't drive my car home. When I drank that charcoal. Man, I miss my mom's so Ask me how it feels. A space feels too real. When you pick up speed, do a splish black weed. Well, you got your thoughts. All the in the deep. What about your heart? Must be too hard now. I'm back. I've got cupcakes not for any particular reason. I just fancied some cupcakes. <laughs> missed my stop on the train, didn't I? Like an absolute idiot. I just wasn't paying attention. So I missed my stop and it took me so much longer to get home. But it's fine, I'm home and I have cupcakes and I brought you guys along with me, which I'm very, very glad that I did. So I feel like the second change to my strategy, showing more of my day-to-day -day life, bringing you guys behind the scenes, I feel like I'm already on my way to doing that. So that's good. Let's talk about the third change that I'm gonna make. I literally haven't even like taken my jacket off and I'm immediately back into my video mode. <laughs> Okay, so the third change isn't really to do with my strategy, it's more about my approach to content creation, specifically content batching. Just throw that over there. So in case you don't know already, I'm a big fan of batching my content, which basically means that I schedule time to do different tasks associated with creating content. So I schedule time to prep for my videos. I schedule time to film. I schedule time to edit. If I edit them, I don't edit my YouTube videos, by the way. But when I'm creating my short forms like my TikToks, for example, I edit them myself. I will do that all in batches. That is not going to change. That is literally how I live my life. I'm never gonna change that. However, the way I schedule those sessions are gonna change. So previously, I would put one day aside per week to create all of my content. So that would be all of my YouTube videos, my shorts, my TikToks, my, well, I wasn't really doing TikTok before, but you know, my Instagram, all of that, I would do it in one day. And what that meant was that day was a bit stressful because there was so much content to create and I had to be on camera a lot. And I'm someone who struggles to like show up on camera in the right headspace for hours and hours on end. In addition to that though, I found that it was becoming difficult to switch from my long form content, that also includes my podcast by the way, to like my shorts. Like they're two different parts of my creative brain, if that makes sense. I don't, and I also don't think that's technically true, but it feels like they're two different parts of my creative brain. And what it takes to create a good short is different to what it takes to create a long form YouTube video or like a podcast. So I was struggling to switch between the two. So what I've decided to do is to schedule one day per week for my long form content. So that's my YouTube videos and my podcast episodes and another day for my short form content. So that is my TikToks and 
my Instagram content. Now, another reason why this is necessary for me is because obviously I'm trying to tackle TikTok this year and be more consistent. So I kind of need to make sure I have enough time in my week to actually create. And so far, I've only done this for like two weeks, but so far, so good. What this has done is given me so much more time to be more creative with the content I'm producing. And actually it feels a lot less stressful and I'm enjoying it a lot more. So watch your space, but that's the current system that I'm using to create my content at the moment. So for my next change, I've got something to show you. This change is to do with my equipment, which I alluded to earlier. I am making some upgrades to my setup. At the moment, I film using my Sony ZV-1, which is what I'm using right now. And a lot of my short forms at my TikTok, I film using my iPhone 14 Pro Max, right? That's not gonna change. But what is going to change is what I use to vlog and also how I light myself for my videos. So I just ordered the Osmo Pocket from DJI and I, it's not come yet. I I actually don't know when it arrives. It's one of those websites where like you just order and just cross your fingers that it doesn't take too long to come. But I've recently just ordered it because I've seen so many creators talk about it. And I'll insert a video on the screen so you can see what it looks like. But it's essentially this tiny pocket camera which has so many incredible features such as an inbuilt gimbal for stabilizing your footage, which is something that I really not struggle with, but something that I've wanted to get for a while, but I didn't want to buy like an actual gimbal. So I purchased that because I think it's going to make my vlogging a lot easier because it's so small. It's easy for me to bring. I could put it in my bags, not just my big, ugly tote bags, but you know, my cute little bags, hopefully it'll fit in there. And you know, it won't be this big, like audacious camera that I have to whip out when I'm eating lunch. And it'll just be a lot easier for me to hopefully capture the behind the scenes of the business. So I'm really excited for that. And I got the creator bundle. So it comes with a microphone. So if you wanna know more about that, let me know in the comments and I will make sure I break it down when it arrives. I'll take you through how I set it up and I'll let you know how it goes. In addition to that, I bought some new lights because previously I was using these lights. They are from Amazon and they work, you know, like they light me up and that's great. However, they are not the easiest things to take down and set up because essentially I have to unscrew the light bulb and like, isn't sound like it's a lot but it is it's annoying and I live in a small flat which I don't have a specific space to film my content I don't have an office I don't have a studio so I do have to set everything down and then put it back up every time I film and it's just a pain and it takes too long so I wanted to get some lights which were easier for me to just set up so hopefully that's what this is so shall we have a look I have not set these up yet so let's see how this goes honestly I'm just adding the parcels when Jamie's been away for work and when he gets back he's gonna be like what the hell <laughs> like you can't even walk through the hallway door without tripping over a parcel like it is ridiculous I know what you're thinking why don't I just get rid of the boxes myself we only have one key to our communal bin isn't that ridiculous like there's two of us and they only gave us one key and that key is on Jamie's key ring because he normally takes out the bins and he's not here so I don't have a key Oh, oh my god <laughs> okay i mean i'm not good at like setting just things up like i just don't have the knack for it so let's just see how this goes there's obviously going to be like the stand for it i guess there are two lights this should be the actual head of the light so this is what it should look like oh that sounds cheap <laughs> I don't know how long this is gonna last, but I mean, they weren't expensive. I'll link to them below. I do wanna invest in really good studio lights at some point, but me and Jamie are hopefully moving this year, which will mean I should have my own studio like by the end of the year. How amazing would that be? So when that happens, I feel like that's gonna be the time when I invest in really good lighting. And I can do it based on the room and stuff. Like I have no idea. We don't have a place yet, so I don't know what the room's gonna look like. By the way, as I do this, in case you were wondering, the coffee I had was really great. As I mentioned, it was with a journalist from a media publication who I really, really like. I really like their stuff and I've worked with them before. I basically just met her at an event that I was speaking at last year and we just kept in touch and we just kept, went for a quick coffee. It was great. It was really lovely to catch up and speak with someone who is, you know, in the same industry and as interested in the creator economy as I am. Like when you work by yourself, even though I do have a team, which I'm so, well, I mean, I've got one person who's full time, but I do have Hayley who I'm so grateful for having because I can chat to her. But sometimes I miss just like, like talking about industry things with people as you go and get a coffee or like, you know, you go to the kitchen in your office and have a chat with someone. I don't always have that now, nowadays. Oh my God, it's such a pity party. My life is so hard. No, it's really not. It's just like one very small negative to what I do. But overall, it's pretty amazing. So I really can't complain. So far, I think I'm doing all right. 
voila i would love to pretend like i just achieved something amazing by setting that up so easily but honestly that was one of the easiest things i've ever set up in my life this is what it looks like and obviously you can adjust it to make it a lot taller i'm gonna put this on behind you where you are so you can see just how bright it gets do you see that the difference can i make it brighter i don't know let's also turn off the overhead lights so you can see it better Ta-da! and i've got two of them there's only one up at the minute but i've purchased two so i think with two of them this is going to be enough i think this will be fine so if you want to see me try out my other piece of kit which is my brand new vlogging camera then make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss the video where i show you it so the fifth and final change that i am making to my social media strategy this year is to do with my analytics and specifically how i analyze the performance of my content so this is a real practice what you preach moment because this is what i have always taught other people and sometimes i'm not great at following my own advice i mean come on sue me isn't everyone kind of like that to an extent and what I'm referring to here is what I need to get better at or what I need to do more consistently is to evaluate the performance of my content based on what the objective of that piece of content was let me break it down so let's take my youtube channel for example i tend to share two different types of content on my youtube channel there is my awareness driving content where i'm talking about trending topics that will hopefully be of interest to a lot of people and then there's my nurture content or like my advocate building content and this is content that isn't necessarily going to go viral or going to reach a bunch of people but the people who do watch it who are usually people who already subscribe to my channel they become more invested in my content they get to know me on a deeper level we bond in some way and it helps to nurture my relationship with them where the problem lies is that i am guilty of not sharing enough of the nurture content purely because i don't analyze it properly so i might upload a vlog like last year i probably uploaded two vlogs i don't even know if i uploaded two i can only think of one let's say two to make myself feel better let's say i uploaded two vlogs and vlogs are the perfect example of nurture content my vlogs aren't going to go viral i know that they're not going to get loads and loads of views but they'll get loads of engagement and the people who do watch them feel like they know me better so let's say i uploaded two vlogs last year when i would have uploaded those vlogs i would have analyzed the performance of those vlogs a few months down the line and then i would have told myself stop filming vlogs because i'll analyze the vlogs and i will see that it didn't get me any views and i didn't get any subscribers from it and blah 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 when actually the metrics i should be looking at when i'm analyzing my vlogs is the amount of likes it got the amount of engagement it got how long people stayed on the video because the purpose of the vlogs is to nurture my audience and therefore the relevant metrics are things like engagement and likes and comments and that's the right way to measure the success of the video and if it gets a good amount of those then the video was a success regardless of how many views it got obviously when I'm talking about my other type of content like my trending content where I'm trying to get a lot of views and I'm trying to grow my audience and get more of you involved in my community right for those types of videos then yeah looking at the view count looking at how many clicks it got looking at how many people decided to subscribe as a result of watching that video those are all the right Right metrics that is the right way to analyze that video but it's not the right way to analyze all of my videos so yeah that's something for you to think about as well but it's just a habit that I fall into and then it stops me from creating my nurture content kind of like this this is like a merge between the two I don't know if it's working let me know but I need to create more of that because like fair enough all of you guys don't want to watch content like this but a lot of people do you know anyway so that's my fifth change that i'm making <laughs> okay that is it those are the changes that i am making to my social media strategy this year i will check back in with you in six months i'll upload a video and i'll let you know what the results of those changes have been if you are someone who is struggling to reach their desired audience through their social media content then i recommend watching this video next i break down the exact steps to follow to make sure that you are reaching your desired audience this is a comment that was left on the previous video just in case you don't think my tips are going to help you hopefully this comment will reassure you that they will. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to see you in my next video.